recording. template from here if you'd like to order the service. All right, well, good morning, everyone. So nice to see people both in person, and I understand we have some people on Zoom. Um, I was planning on being in the lounge today, so it's a special treat because um, today's talk is focused on the outdoors. So thank you for those who are managing our Zoom setup. Thank you to those who got this tent set up. Um, hopefully the rain will, will stay away, but uh, it's always a nice reminder for our plants and flowers um, to have the rain and, and the wind feels nice right now. So again, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. My name is Evan Wilson. I'm a member here of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Worcester. I'll be leading today's summer service. I'm happy to be here today to talk a bit about something that um, I have much, much fondness and attachment for, um, which is our Mother Earth. So as we gather today, either in person or online, I'd like to invite you first to become grounded and settled. Uh, try to feel supported where you are. If you're sitting in a chair, I invite you to sit up nice and tall. If your feet are under you uh, or any part of your body are under you, start just to feel grounded. Feel the earth below you. If you are comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes and take three deep breaths in through your nose and breathing out through your mouth. Today's chalice reading is the Global Chalice Lighting for July 2021 from the International Council of Unitarian Universalists. 
This reading is offered by the Unitarian Communi Community of Rio de Janeiro. We light this flame as a reminder of our mission of being a light of the world in unity with those who came before us and with whom we are a spiritual family. We shall be able to commit to the building of a community of free faith beyond geographical limits and personal beliefs. May we be a shelter to all who need it the most. So next on our order of service, if anyone is curious to follow along, I will be following the order of summer worship. Um, so up next is welcome announcements and introductions. So again, I'd like to welcome you all to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Worcester's summer Sunday morning worship service. I'm glad that you've joined us here both in person and online. We hope that this service gives you an opportunity to pause and reflect for a few moments to gather in community so that we might care for each other, take a moment to reflect on our own well-being and discover opportunities for spiritual refreshment and service in the wider world. A clipboard right now is going around in person. Um, if you'd care to fill it out. Um, if you're new to the church as well, you can write down a, an email or a way to get in touch. So we're gathering in this hybrid nature um, for the foreseeable future. Um, and again, many thanks to our many friends uh, who have set up this dual nature. Also throughout the next few months, our religious exploration program will be offering opportunities for children and youth to gather in person as well as outside. Uh, please visit UUCW Worcester. Uh, I'm sorry, UUCWorcester.org for more information on these get togethers as well as other opportunities to meet for discussion and support. For those of you joining us on Zoom this morning for safety purposes, and so we might come to better know you, as you're able, please list your name on your video feed. Please note, this service is being live streamed on Facebook and is being recorded for future availability on the church YouTube channel, as well as our website, Worship Archive. Following the service, you are invited to join us for virtual... Are we back on? Very good. Thank you for the AV support. I think we are back. I was finishing my welcome. Everyone should feel welcomed. Um, up next on our order of service is our call to worship and affirmation. And for our call to worship, I'd like to make a land acknowledgement, which is another powerful way to feel grounded and connected to the earth. Um, I want to thank UU Mass Action, as well as a faculty member at Clark, who I've, um, I'm using some of their words um, in the land acknowledgement, um, Professor de Molnier. So for our land acknowledgement, I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Nipmuc people. I want to acknowledge the painful history of genocide and forced removals from this territory. I honor and respect the many indigenous people still living on these lands. Offering a land acknowledgement is a way to constantly acknowledge that we are on occupied indigenous land. 
to not do so is to contribute to the amnesia or erasure of our history. In reality, our connection to the land where we live, work, and worship is founded upon a history of settler colonialism. News today reminds us of the history of forced boarding schools in the US and Canada, where indigenous youth were forced to leave behind their culture and language. This weekend I was down on the Cape and I couldn't help but take in the natural beauty, um, but also notice uh, many beaches and many town names carrying um, names from the land's original inha inhabitants. So for me, offering a land acknowledgement reminds me to consider and reflect upon who has access to the spaces that we inhabit, who is taking up space and who is left out. For our reading, I'll be reading The Moths by Mary Oliver. There's a kind of white moth, I don't know what kind, that glimmers by mid-May in the forest, just as the pink moccasin flowers are rising. If you notice anything, it leads you to notice more and more. And anyway, I was so full of energy. I was always running around looking at this and that. If I stopped, the pain was unbearable. If I stopped and thought, maybe the world can't be saved, the pain was unbearable. Finally, I noticed enough. All around me in the forest, the white moths floated. How long do they live, fluttering in and out of the shadows? You aren't much, I said one day to my reflection in a green pond and grinned. The wings of the moths catch the sunlight and burn so brightly. At night, Sometimes they slip between the pink lobes of the moccasin flowers and lie there until dawn, motionless in those dark halls of honey. Mary Oliver's poem captures so much about my love of the environment, especially being witness to the wonder and awe of the world around us. If we slow ourselves to, to stop and smell the flowers, I believe we can help ourselves truly come home. Even when we're inside, I believe we can slow down and reorient ourselves to the fact that we are living beings on this planet Earth. Our technology, while truly amazing, also has allowed us to transcend our bodies and either forget, lose sight, or become numb to the fact that we are bodies on planet Earth. I also share Oliver's deep concern about the health and well being of our planet. Over a lifetime of engaging in outdoor activities alongside the development of my UU faith, I've seen the importance of giving energy, attention, and appreciation to the interconnected web in which we all live, which may sound very familiar to one of our seven UU principles. More to come on that. So it comes to the time in our service for sharing of joys and concerns. This is our time in the service when we pause and consider that which we carry in our hearts and minds this morning, joys and sorrows that are given another measure of meaning because we have the capacity to share them with a group of friends that claim us as a co-journeyer. So I invite you to come and speak briefly into the microphone, giving us your name, so we might better get to know one another. If you're joining us online and wish to have a joy or sorrow shared, please add it to the comments preceded by please read so that we can find it quickly and speak your words aloud for all to hear. Is there anyone here among us that has a joy or sorrow to share? Sean and I and a few other um, participants of this congregation were able to join Brianna and Dimitri Lowell get married yesterday in a beautiful service that took place right here. And I'm also really excited that this week we get to go see our first Woo Sox game. <laughs> 
it's 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 quite the event when the tech team all have joys and sorrows. <laughs> I have the great joy and feeling deeply humbled. I am so happy that Moira and Sean Duval and Bruce Lachey, who isn't here, <clears throat> and myself and Vernon Duval put this tent up yesterday. And let me tell you, this was not an easy affair. Enjoy it while you can. Big storms may take it out next time. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. From Beth Posner Waldron on Zoom, my mom did really great getting her pacemaker on Wednesday, and I think she already has more energy. I'm so blessed to have this week to spend with her and other close family who live around here. Thank you to those who kept us in their thoughts. And Beth also lets us know that she's in Maryland near DC and occupy land of the people of the I'm sorry, Piscataway, Piscataway tribe, Piscataway Kano creations, Pamunkey Indian tribe, Nintango, also known as the Nenichoke, and the Confederation of Sovereign Nenichoke Lenape tribes and the Batapone. <laughs> Uh, good morning. I'm Karen Stevenson, and I have a joy. Uh, last night, my family and I drove down to um, New Haven to celebrate my mom's 86th birthday. It's the first time we've all been together since uh, Christmas 2019. Uh, so there's lots of tears. It was great. It was great dinner. It, uh, first time my little one was out in public and she didn't burn the place down. Um, <laughs> and, and what was really neat was when we got there, the bartender, like my sister hugged me and held on and the tears started and my little one hugged my sister and held her forever and the bartender welled up and I looked at her and I was like, this must happen for you a lot. She was like, all the time. <laughs> so it was really great. Thank you, Karen. This one is from um, off of Facebook from the Reverend Aaron Payson who joins us on Facebook. <laughs> we were saddened to learn of the death of Adina Tillander, longtime member of the congregation. Edna, okay, it's probably a typo. There will be a gathering of friends and family from three to 6 p.m. tomorrow here at the church. Thank you everyone for sharing uh, your joys and concerns as we are here in our outdoor tent. I can feel uh, what I often think of as magical winds. I think it's atmospheric pressure uh, blowing through, uh, but may our, our beautiful, bountiful mother earth take all the joys, uh, take the sorrows, that which we've shared, that which uh, folks are holding on to. Uh, blow them around a bit so we can share in each other's joys and uh, carry a bit of the, the sorrows or challenges people are holding with them. Um, next is our moment of silence and meditation. So when I slow down and, collect, and can let my mind fully enjoy its nature bath, away from technology, away from worries, 
I feel as if I flip a switch and I can fully appreciate myself again as a being on the planet. Personally, I've always been humbled by trees. I've been in awe. I am in awe of their integrity and strength, their ability to adapt to harsh circumstances and severe exposures. In my hometown, UU Church that I grew up in, I would always watch the trees that blew in the wind outside of the sanctuary windows. The windows at our historic meeting church, or at our meeting, uh, the meeting house, the historic church building, um, they were just large blank windows. But I always thought of the leaves and the trees as the stained glass. It was my part of nature that accompanied me during service, showing their flexibility and ease as they blew in the wind, while also showing their stability and strength in their grounded, secure trunk. I hope you all have had a powerful moment in nature or are able to find solace in some part of our natural world. Maybe it's even just enjoying some white noise tracks such as ocean waves, a babbling brook, rain sounds, or animal noises. The outdoors offers us a chance to remember who we are and where we are and provides opportunities for meditation and reflection. With this in mind, I invite you to listen to the outdoor sounds or focus on whatever sights or sounds you have of nature. I invite you to take five breaths, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. This is another opportunity to practice feeling grounded to the earth beneath our bodies. As we sit here on the corner of Shore Drive and Holden Street, I, I can't help but hear many other humans and, uh, and their machinery driving by. Um, but it, it is always that reminder for me, you know, despite all of these magical things that we have, technology, brick buildings, cars, pavements, um, we are still humans uh, on the earth and, and hopefully uh, having an opportunity to, to breathe, feel the earth beneath us, we can remind ourselves that um, that again, we, we are benefiting from uh, reaping the fruits of, of Mother Earth um, and remind ourselves that again, we are beings on this planet. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite you to participate in an offering to support the work and mission of this church and our congregation. If you're joining us remotely, you can participate in the offering online through our website, uucworcester.org. And I have a, uh, a offertory reading that I'd like to, to share. Uh, the reading is by Jane Goodall. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. By Jane Goodall. We are at the reflection presentation portion of our summer service. Today, I'm excited to be talking with you about our planet. I titled my talk today, Exploring and Appreciating Our Shared Home, Mother Earth. First, I acknowledge that some people might not feel like they are outdoor people, but I urge you to reconsider. Nearly every baby I know is deeply enamored with the earth, reaching for grass, dirt and sand and doing what with it? Putting it right in their mouth. 
As we grow though, as we grow older, it feels as if we are socialized to curb our earth loving ways. And we become consumed by our technology and modern conveniences. While most weekends I am jumping to get outside, I notice that during the routine of the work week, I have to actively remind and push myself to take a walk and to soak up mother nature. Otherwise, I'll only catch glimpses of our sacred and precious planet out my car window or out my apartment window in between this or that thing, often a this or that thing, which is on a screen. So for those of you that don't like creepy crawlies or dirt or getting hot and sweaty outside, I understand. I nonetheless urge and hope, I urge you and hope that you have a location, a space, or an experience where you can feel comfortable while also feeling grounded and connected to the earth. I think even sitting inside and noticing, is it light out? Is it dark out? Remembering that the light comes from our sun. The darkness is a crazy phenomenon of the sun and the moon and reflections. Again, noticing the, the trees blowing. There's always an opportunity if we uh, allow ourselves to see it, to remind ourselves that, again, we are grounded here on, on our planet. As I mentioned earlier, when reflecting on Mary Oliver's poem, The Moths, I felt a deep spiritual connection to the natural world and have sought out opportunities where I can fully immerse myself in outdoor activities. My camping, neighborhood walks, rock climbing, cross-country skiing, are all deep dives for me into practicing and living out UU's seventh principle, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. The more I've learned about environmental issues, many of which are human caused, think climate change, think pollution, the more I've wanted to get to know, appreciate and advocate for our home and the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. When it comes to the environment, unfortunately, I think many of us are forced to live a dissonant life. We might hold commitments to environmentalism and, conserva and conservation, but we might take actions that unwittingly hurt the environment. Herein lies the problem. Humans have created systems and structures that undergird our daily lives yet which operate without our attention and sometimes knowledge. They're out of sight, out of mind. Yet these systems that we need for food, energy, waste management are all inextricably linked to our earth. Think food production. Engaging in a local organic food system might be the best way for both our planet and our bellies, but the costs often drive people away. Governmental subsidies for large-scale farmers are another element of the food production system, which operates largely out of sight and out of mind, despite being central to people's engagement with food. Think energy. Amazing Zoom setup. Without um, some energy, it would not be possible. Does the average person acknowledge that it's not magic that comes out of our outlets or out of our light bulbs when we flip a switch? but most often it is from burning fossil fuels. How about trash and recycling? I feel as if we've brainwashed ourselves to think that we can recycle most consumer goods. Greenwashing is likely a better word. We think or hope that our actions are environmentally friendly, but in reality, much of our recycling, for example, is basically plastic trash made from fossil fuels, which end up in our oceans. What happens when we aren't aware of something, we can become ungrateful. We might not appreciate something or we become ignorant of it. It takes a lot of energy to swim upstream and work against these systems, to learn the truth about these systems that are taxing our planet. I see this work as part of my spiritual commitment, part of my spiritual journey, rooted in my respect for our interdependent web, but also rooted in UU's fourth principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. 
seeking out the truth when it comes to the systems that impact our daily lives, all of which are literally fed out of our planet, are critical, especially in today's world where we are seeing dramatic effects of human-induced climate change and environmental injustice. When preparing for today's service and thinking about the alignment between my UU values and my outdoor activities, a few other examples came to mind that I wanted to share. The first is Nick's Woods, Religious Exploration and the Third Principle. Has anyone ever been to Nick's Woods? A few hands. Nick's Woods is a, uh, a small piece of land managed by the Greater Worcester Land Trust, so it's conservation land. It is in walking distance, um, just up the street here. Um, so this past winter, I had the privilege of connecting with a group of fifth and sixth graders here from UUCW, along with our Director of Religious Exploration, Robin Mitskovich, Tom Heffernan, and Claire Brayton. For several weeks during the winter, during the pandemic, the group of masked bandits, is what they colloquially called themselves, um, got decked out in full winter gear and masks because it was not only winter, it was also in the midst of the pandemic, to explore the woods together. The opportunity to play and explore in a new part of our neighborhood while building connections with one another and engaging in faith development through spiritual routines and reflections, felt very aligned with our third UU principle, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. I love the encouraging and supportive space for learning and exploration that UU religious exploration provides. I share this as both a young person who grew up in the Unitarian Church as well as seeing UUCW's religious exploration for children and youth as well. I'm always so glad to see where these uh, two things combined, the uh, exploring our planet and also exploring our faith together. How are folks doing over here? Do we need to, um, do we need to, yeah. Oh, I'm taking this as a moment to hear hear what's going on, get excited for our plants so we don't have to water. My uh, second example is um, rock climbing and valuing the inherent worth and dignity of every person. So over the past several years, I've become more and more engaged in rock climbing. My apologies for not figuring out how to display my rock climbing photos for our Zoomers online, um, but I do promise to offer any photos um, of, of rock climbing or of camping, um, stand up paddle boarding, um, any of my outdoor adventures, if anyone wants to vicariously live. Um, but so climbing is not only a great workout, but it's an activity that is done in community um, and oftentimes in the outdoors. It is also one rooted in, in friendship and connection. You are literally trusting your climbing partners with your life. So usually you want to make sure that they're decent people and um, can, you know, hold up their end of the bargain. Making it to the end of a 70 foot outdoor climb offers one of the most exhilarating views of mother nature you can get. After you've just solved a very interesting and challenging whole body puzzle thrown in with flavor shots of adrenaline, camaraderie, challenge and growth. So the community of climbers, again, like I said, are often a group of individuals, people who push each other, um, people who tend to the outdoors around the environment in, in which they're climbing. They write reviews for different climbs. They give tips for how to do the routes. But also as of recently, the climbing community has been reflecting and reconciling whether climbing is an inclusive experience where all people feel worthy and dignified. Very much in line with our first UU principle valuing the inherent worth and dignity of every person. The tradition of root naming is that if you climbed it first, you get to name it. 
So many climbs, which are still used today, their names carry names that are offensive, demeaning to women or ethnic groups. While debate within the rock climbing community is usually focused on the best technique to complete a particular climb, it's been heartening to see that the climbing community as well has been reckoning with how to value everyone's humanity while promoting an inclusive access to the outdoors. Finally, I'd like to share about our commitment here at UCW um, to respect and support our environment. Our, the congregation's commitment to the environment feeds my desire to continue to engage in the pursuit of truth, really understanding what is going on with our environment, and also taking action when it comes to respecting our interdependent web. From the solar panels on our church, to our new rain garden, to a commitment to plant native plants, which support pollinators, which support strengthening our local and natural ecosystem, to setting up compost in the back, to inviting our uh, children and teens to help plant a food garden. All of this matters. Being a part of the Side with Love group here at UCW, we often discuss issues related to climate change or environmental justice, and we take action through partners such as UU Mass Action, or the Worcester Congregations for Climate Action. These opportunities to be grounded on the earth and to feel supported by our planet while being connected with our UU values truly brings me joy. I hope you all have a way, an activity, a place that allows you to feel connected, to feel grounded, and to feel supported by the earth. I hope you continue on your journey to seek the truth about how we can best support our environment and stave off that unbearable pain that Mary Oliver wrote about. The pain associated with the potential reality that our earth might not be saved or is beyond repair to support human civilization. We are at our closing reading or song which I'd like to cue and invite Cheryl. This is We Shall Be Known. Shall be known by the company, by the ones who circle around the family. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we cry. It is time we lead ourselves into the world. It is time now. And what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep. By the ones who circle round the tendies. Ah. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the west. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. We shall be known by the company we keep. 
by the ones who circle round to tend these vines. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now. It is time now that we thrive. Thank you. We are at the benediction. I needed to. Uh, I needed to look up benediction to see uh, <laughs> what, what what I needed to offer here. Um, and uh, these are some words that that I wrote for you all. May you plant and water seeds, plant them in the earth and in your mind. Acknowledge they will not grow overnight, but will grow and emerge at their own pace. Plant seeds of awareness appreciation and respect for all that our earth provides us. Plant seeds of awareness that we are on colonized lands. Plant seeds of awareness of the systems that feed our modern daily human existence. Plant seeds of curiosity and wonder of the natural world. And I encourage you to water those seeds with whatever your preferred outdoor earth embracing activity is. Mother Nature has already extinguished our chalice. I'd like to uh, start with just uh, one announcement and see if anyone else had other announcements and um, also invite folks something nice that I always appreciate about a summer service is it's usually a little smaller and intimate. So I'd love to invite anyone to share maybe a connection that you all have with engaging in the outdoors and uh, you know activities that, that ground you. Um, in our in our daily existence. Um, so first for an announcement, um, upcoming this Thursday, maybe even under this tent if it's still here, um, the eighth principal task force is inviting people to come for a picnic. So the eighth principal task force is a group of people here at the church who are working to bring forward a, a new principal to the congregation, one that um, commits to accountably working to dismantle racism and other oppressions in our uh, world at large. Uh, and so the, the picnic and conversation is around a play called The Niceties. The Niceties was offered by the Worcester County Light Opera Club and um, connected to the historical um, society here in Worcester. And there's a YouTube version of the play, The Niceties. So if anyone is interested, it is a play between a, a professor and her student it explores themes of power, privilege, and race. Um, so we'll be joining here Thursday, this Thursday afternoon. I believe it's the 29th, uh, 6.30. People are welcome. Any other announcements? Can I add to that? Yes, please. Um, I'm a part of the eighth, eighth principle, and we would like you to watch it and come. So we're not watching it here. It's a discussion. Um, I've seen the play. I unpacked it with my husband, but there's just so much more to unpack. So it would be lovely to have people come and watch it and come, you know, discuss what you're thinking and feeling when you after you've seen it. Other announcements. Thank you all for uh, braving Mother Nature and, <laughs> and joining us for summer worship today. Next week, our past president, John O'Dell, will be our presenter, and he will be discussing the city's sustainability plan 
along with an overview of the state's response to climate change. So another interesting discussion about what goes on around us. Please join us. <laughs> So far, the only Zoom announcement, because we're delayed, so be patient, is amazing service. And we have a thank you, Evan, and the worship team for a moving service. And Beth says, beautiful, Evan. So as a reminder, the churches or the service is still being live streamed and recorded, but um, as anyone is feeling comfortable, I'd love to invite you to take our furry microphone and introduce yourself and, and share um, maybe a connection that you have uh, with our environment, something that, that again, grounds you to, to our earth and, and reminds you to, to live out some of our, our you values. Anyone interested in sharing? I'll just share a couple things. I um, Who are you? oh Sunnese closer. Okay, I'm near here, so uh, so I've start. I yeah. Let's see. Um, about 15 years ago, I decided that I was going to start a garden, a vegetable garden, uh, and it was really awful looking <laughs> the first year. Uh, not much grew. Um, uh, today it's it's doing better. I'm I'm not a green thumb at all, but um, I have lots of tomatoes, so I may be bringing them next week. <laughs> um, some plants are you know are getting eaten alive, and I don't want to use any pesticides or anything like that. So um, if anybody has any ideas about how to avoid that, that'd be awesome. Uh, the other connection that I have just started 18 months ago are maybe a little more, a little less with my grandson. Uh, my, my son and daughter-in-law like to, uh, they're very outdoor people and uh, they bring them on walks and hikes and he loves dirt and mud <laughs> and he eats everything. <laughs> so that's uh, an additional connection that I have with the earth now. <laughs> I'm Carol Howe, and every time I'm here working in the gardens, I feel connected and, and um, one of the happiest places to be. But what just happened to me, my brother, who grew up in this church as well, lives in Montana now, and he sent me a map of smoke and fires of Idaho and Montana. And the map is just, he sent me this kind of stuff because I like statistics. And he does too. And the map was filled with all these dots where it's difficult to uh, breathe. And the red dots are, the warning is, don't go outside, stay inside, close your windows. Even if you don't have a health problem, stay inside. That was just one place in Montana. And then most of the state is filled with yellow dots where uh, if you have a problem, don't go outside. And then there were some green spots. And then today I got an email from him of a beautiful alpine flower, um, one of his own pictures. And it made me think, I can't remember the phrase, it's probably Shakespeare, but, but life goes on. No matter what we have been doing to our planet, there's this precious little white alpine flower. Hi, I think a lot of you, I'm Peg Daly. I think a lot of you know that I love to ski and do all sorts of things outside. And I used to sail a lot and um, had given it up for water skiing, but I have two grandchildren, a 10 year old and an eight year old. And I went down to Regatta Point and signed them up for the day camp. And it was five days. Unbelievably, the very first day, they were both out in a sailboat without any adult in the boat. It was three or four kids. They were 15 foot sloops. And by the end of the week, uh, Friday, my daughter and I went to sail with the 10 year old, the eight year old was a little scared. And it was like a big black cloud Friday afternoon and really heavy winds. I think, oh, 
well, I'm telling you, that kid just sailed a figure eight. It's amazing. And they, they love the outside in the winter. And now they love the summer, the sailing, as well as swimming. And I did pass my helmsman. So that's cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Peg gives us another reminder of our, I believe, is, is it our final summer service? August 29th. August 29th, which will be held down at Regatta Point. So if anyone is interested in joining together in community in the outdoors, we will sign up online. And there'll be kayaks available. Boats available. Boats available. Would anyone else like to share before we, we close the service for today? While Beth is typing, I would share that we are still in the process of putting together our fundraiser for December, but one of the things that we're doing is asking people to find donations and one of the ones that we were hoping to get that you will be able to bid on is something at Regatta Point, and another is going to the Pawsox and another so think about it, you must know someone who does something, or you do something that would be a gift to the community to be able to take it home and know that it came from you. I am going to donate pies. Nice. <laughs> she ready? Here we go. Beth says, I credit Peg with urging me to buy a season pass for skiing this coming winter at Wachusett Mountain. Also share that this year plus uh, uh, of pandemic. pandemic gave us opportunities for being outside. Uh, paw socks are now the woo socks and yippee for pies. <laughs> so our chalice is already extinguished. One more? Yes, yes please. Um, I'm Karen and I am reminded that Evan's story about the trees at church it's exactly what I do here, that I ensure that I sit on the side where I can see the, this tall tree here and I watch it all season. I watch it when it's raining. I watch the wind um, and it puts me in a really lovely space. And in fact, uh, a dear friend of mine and I have been working on kind of a life coaching series group around trees and their stability and their adaptability and using art and photography and storytelling to kind of attach um, how we can be more resilient like trees. Thanks, Karen, a beautiful, a beautiful way to, to round out. So I think with that, I will uh, say thank you all for coming. I think we can uh, end our, our Zoom land and, and maybe invite some some fellowship time here. Um, thanks everyone again for coming.